He didn't do anything wrong in this situation. He took a pitch in the back. He got beamed for crying out loud. We used heart attack. Lee. Managers on a Major League Baseball team don't make decisions. Credibility in this situation is worse than losing your job. Was it over when the Jimmy's Bob Pro Hunter? The castration of the Major League Baseball managers, we know it. Ask me about my winner. What's going on, everybody? Another edition of the Passball Show brought to you by JohnPielli.com, by St. Aloysius Church in Jackson, New Jersey, by Two Ways, One Passion Food Truck located in Scranton, Pennsylvania. One of my favorite times of year as we get into right now the MLB predictions and previews of the Passball Show, something that I'm happy to say that I've done for the last 11 years. I haven't had the best of luck, but it's an optimistic time where, as a baseball fan, every baseball fan feels like their team has a legitimate shot to make the postseason. Certainly now when the amount of playoff teams has increased from 10 to 12 and will be going forward. And, you know, just to enjoy the start of baseball, which next week around this time, the whole sport's going to be getting going. And obviously my predictions over the last several years, listen, some have hit, some haven't. Um, I've kept kind of a similar theme, so I think there's a lot of, of people that are upset with that. They don't like my narrative, the couple things that I continue to throw out there each way, and I've said it before when it comes to the teams that insist on trying to find different ways to build strong, competitive baseball teams by not compensating those players and not adding to those compensated players I really don't believe it's going to lead to a World Series championship. And I think that's something that I've stuck to. It's one of those hills that I believe that I will kind of stand on the top of until I'm dragged down from. But we're going to get into it real quick. Going down from 30 to 1. And anybody who is not familiar with my 30 to 1 MLB countdown previews, I'm not going to get as much in-depth with it as I have in previous years. But... I'm going to try to use a the formula that it has worked for me. The 30th team is the team that I believe is going to be the worst in baseball, the team that has the most to improve upon. Um, and I'm going to try to spend a little bit talking about each team, tr probably trying not to get over 40 minutes when it comes total to the entirety of this operation here. So first team we're going to talk about is the team that I believe is going to be in the worst spot. Um, they got a long way to go, but I do think there is some promise. And I'm talking about the Pittsburgh Pirates, a team that I believe will lose over 100 games this coming season. Top prospect O'Neill Cruz, I think, is somebody that should be looked at. He's the starting shortstop for the future for the Pirates. He's going to be starting the season in AAA. I know Key Brian Hayes is there. Brian Reynolds is over there playing center field. Uh, remember, they had Josh Bell a couple years ago. They traded him away. This is a team that kind of got back into a playoff type of mentality with the likes of Andrew McCutcheon and Starling Marte. I like the direction they're going in. I think Ben Sherrington has a plan. I think the Pirates at some point are going to get better. I just don't think it's going to be this season. I got them 60 and 102, finishing last place in the National League Central. So as I slide to the next worst team, this is a team that I don't believe is getting any better. And I'm a little, I'm a little bothered by it because I don't think baseball is set for teams to intentionally not make the appropriate efforts that are needed. And I have such a problem with the Baltimore Orioles and general manager Mike Elias and the construction of their roster at this point. How many years are the Baltimore Orioles going to go out there and just not compete? I don't mind struggling. I don't mind teams having a bad season or two or three. But this is coming from the top. The effort is not being put into by the front office to make this team any better and to have any plans to get any better. A player like Trey Mancini should be celebrated for everything he has brought to the game. Obviously, everything he's battled getting through cancer. and you know, you know He should be an Oriole for life. I, I don't know if he's going to be an Oriole by the end of the season because I, I, I don't think this team has any plans on wanting to have a competitive team. Now, they have one of the, the best prospects in all of baseball. You know, Adley Rushman, 
who should be up at the major leagues this year, producing at hopefully uh, top prospect level. John Means threw a no-hitter last year. They have some talent there. The problem is, is I don't think they've done enough from a front office and team building standpoint. And I really do think they need to go in a different direction. This may be a time to bring in a Ben Sherrington type, who I believe in Pittsburgh. I believe in his mindset and the fact that he cares enough about baseball and wants to, to field a winning team. I, I'm not, he's not going to leave the Pirates to go to the Orioles, but find somebody that gives a shit. Because I don't think Mike Elias, as a general manager of the Baltimore Orioles, gives a shit. So we move on to team number 28. Speaking of giving a shit, you talk about the Cincinnati Reds. And the Reds had a lot to root for over the last couple of years. This was a team that looked like it was built to win. And I think there's there was some promise going into this season. The Reds, for some reason, probably coming down from ownership within the front office, decided that you know they don't have the money to compensate their players. And this is what baseball is kind of falling into. And this, to me, is the biggest issue, the biggest um, separation between the owners and the players. Centers around competition, where the owners care, care more about com coming up with a profit and turning their business into a success than they give the slightest shit about winning. And it's not any more evident than looking at the Cincinnati Reds. And yes, I look at it right now and I'm not rooting for the Cincinnati Reds. No issue I have with the organization. I'm a big Pete Rose fan. I love the Red Machine and Joe Morgan and Tony Perez and the guys of the 70s. I think the 1919 Cincinnati Reds were probably the most disrespected World Series champion in the history of the sport. You know, Ed Rausch and, and, and those guys who were, were known as the World Series champions because the other team lost and not because they won. The 1990 team with Chris Sabo and, you know, talk about how great of a player Eric Davis could have been, you know, had he not, you know, battled the certain injuries that he had to deal with. I'm a fan of the Reds as an organization. I hate what they've done here. Now you think, hey, dumping off some players, maybe getting a little bit better of a minor league system. They, they could go to a retool as opposed to a rebuild. Uh, certainly isn't making Joey Votto happy, I'll tell you that. A Hall of Famer, a player that has busted his ass, has has managed to stay not only, not only on the field, but I think in a position where he progressively has gotten better after you thought he was hitting a little bit of a decline. 938 OPS last year, hit 266. Listen, I get it. Joey Votto's not probably not a 300 hitter anymore. Almost drove in 100 runs. You know, they had some offense around them with you as Ennio Suarez, 